my name is Regina and welcome back to Teach LA. Um, today we're going to go over, today's like the first session of React, right? So we're going to go over like an introduction to React and like a workspace. And then we're also going to talk about Yarn in TypeScript and why we're using it, right? Um, rather than like just NPM and JavaScript, which is the default, right? So I'll just get started then. Um, so first we're going to introduce, actually, let's talk about a little bit about Git. Git is super useful and important to know. So I'd highly recommend just like, if you're not super comfortable with it, I'd recommend like, there's this desk, you can use desktop app um, if you need more resources and it'll like help you check to see how well you're doing. And like, it makes you like make a repository and like just commit to it and it'll check it. Um, it's pretty nice and useful to like actually like check your understanding because sometimes you'll watch videos and that's not really helpful because like you wanna just like get hands on a little more. Um, if that's so, then you should probably just get it. Um, and that's really nice. Um, and it's really important to be able to know how to use Git because it's useful to be able to commit to other repositories in case um, like you want to practice and stuff like that. So I highly recommend doing that. If you still need help with Git because there's always like a little bit of nooks and crannies that are a little bit difficult to like sort through for Git, um, you can just like Slack me or just like message me or something. Um, and yeah, I'd be definitely happy to help. Um, so I'm just going to get into it then. I'm going to introduce the workspace surrounding React and just Yarn, TypeScript, um, NPM, that kind of stuff for us. So you probably have heard of Node before, um, or if you haven't, totally good. Um, but if you have heard of Node, often you hear it here with Express, sometimes like in replacement of Express, a little confusing. Um, but basically, Express what is Express? Express is a backend web application for framework for Node.js. So it's a framework backend, put that together, backend framework thing in JavaScript generally. You can probably do it in TypeScript as well. Um, so when people say Node, sometimes they mean Express, but they just use the wrong term just to like let you know. But all notice is it's a runtime that brings JavaScript out of the browser and into your hardware. So what does that mean, right? So actually like um, JavaScript is built into your council and your browser. So if you do anything, right? So let's say um, three plus four or one, I mean, four. If you just run JavaScript in your browser, right? That's just how, that's just what JavaScript, how it has been. Um, but what Node does is it brings the ability to take JavaScript out of the browser into, into your hardware. I literally just said that, but just to reiterate. So um, it's right. That means that like it can, you can run JavaScript directly on your computer and it can like deal with input output. It can deal with like, like that's how you can do socketing and stuff like that, right? In um, JavaScript and stuff like that, because you have Node that interfaces JavaScript with your browser. Um, so yeah, like that's what Node is. It's just a runtime environment, right? So it's kind of like JRE, or it's like when you run Python and like you can run Python in your computer and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that's like a runtime environment. So I will show an example as to how to run Node. All you do is it's kind of like um, Python when you just write Node, and now you can run anything. That's not gonna work, but right. Um, it's like that. It's the same as before. I can still I can still do three three plus one and it'll work, right? Um, that's what Node is. Um, probably try not to get it confused with a framework. Um, what a framework is is a framework is a it tells you where and how to use it. So like Django is a framework also, and basically like it tells you where to write stuff. It tells you like okay, you have to do it this way. Um, versus a library where it's kind of like math and C plus plus where you can where you can use it however you want, right? So maybe suddenly you want to do math.round or like suddenly you want to do math.floor and stuff like that. So you can use it however you want. So there are three main three different things, right? So runtime environment, framework, and library. It's a little bit like confusing as to what's what, but this will come up again later. So I'm just gonna bring it up right now. Um, so yeah, like that's what notice. Um, what is NPM and what is Yarn, right? Because NPM is right next to Yarn. NPM stands for Node Package Manager. And it's basically a tool that deals with like package installation and dependencies and like linking this and that for Node applications, right? Um, there is a registry 
npm registry that has like 1.3 million um packages like for use so like i can just like use any of these 1.3 billion packages right um and yeah that's what the registry for npm is it's really powerful because then you don't have to write your own code right um yarn is another package manager and it's what we're going to use here at teach um yarn is quite preferred just because there's like actually quite a few benefits right so there's like three main ones the first one is um it carries some security benefits over npm so that's nice second of all it's the commands are a little cleaner and a little easier to use and understand so like it's a little more straightforward right and then finally it is faster to compile code and like run it uh, so look here look how much slower npm is with yarn like literally every single thing is slower than yarn so i mean there's just a lot more benefits to using yarn uh, but there are a few little hubs that we have to get over in order to get to yarn but these like mini like developmental like hubs are worth it because yarn is so powerful and nice and it's just so beneficial um so two main things that i can see like like why we stayed at npm for a really long time uh one of them is i'll go over it later but you need to actually install yarn like it's not npm is there by default yarn is not yarn you have to install by yourself um, the second reason is because, uh, well, like, the thing is Yarn can use everything in the NPM registry, right? Because it's just a package registry. It's not specific to NPM and stuff like that. Uh, but a lot of times there is a default right here. So you see how this is a default? Um, and you just copy and paste it in order to add to your dependencies. Um, and that is kind of nice where now you can write NPM I typo dash JS. But in Yarn, you're going to have to use Yarn add typo dash JS, right? So that's a little annoying, to be quite honest. But it's a really small difference for like being able to understand things and just being able to um, like it is just the three benefits, which are like speed, security, and um, and just easy ease of use is just worth it over these two small like hops. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to continue on and talk about how to install these little guys. Um, so first, like in order to install Node, you can just go to nodejs.org and just download it. Nothing super special. npm downloads by default when you de install Node. So that's nice and easy. Um, in order to install Yarn, it's kind of interesting, kind of funny, but you actually have to use npm to install Yarn. And so y'all, all you have to do is run npm install dash dash global yarn. So what this is saying is it is installing globally, aka to your computer as a whole, not just to your package. You're going to add yarn to your computer. And now you can just use yarn commands in the future. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go over a little bit about how to use yarn, right? Uh, so yarn in the sense of dealing with your package, your current repository, your current workspace, et cetera, et cetera, however you want to say it. Uh, so in order to make your author uh, a, I'm going to delete these because I'm going to make these. Uh, but basically, in order to make your file, your 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 current workspace a like a package, um, what you need to do is you would type in yarn in it, right? So let's try that out. And this will initiate your package, your your current repository to be a package. Uh, it's kind of like when you do init, where you're initiating your area as a um, git repository. So as you can see here, it has created a package.json, right? So that, just now I typed a bunch of like I typed a bunch of metadata, and it's going to be saved inside of this package.json. So let's take a look. Um, so you can see here. Um, as you can see here, it has some metadata, right? And you can just change these and stuff like that. Um, but like, if you wanted to add a dependency, so like if we're dependent on like, say like, I don't know, typo.js, we can do yarn, yarn, yarn. Hey, yo. Well, let's make a new one. Yarn, add typo.js. Um, what's going to happen, what's happening here is there's no action. So it, 
installs the dependency that we specify and all the dependencies that this guy specified, right? So anything that typo-js needed, it was going to install. But there were no independent, there were no other dependencies, so we just installed typo-js. Um, that's a little bit example as to how to use Yarn. Um, you know, earlier we did like a global installation and that installed it, installed Yarn to our computer. We can do the same thing with um, Yarn, right? So what you would do is if you want to add like create React app, a command that you want to use in the future, all you need to do is yarn global add create React app. Um, and what that will do is it will add to our computer create React app. Um, so yeah. I guess I can go over a little bit as to the things that it created. Uh, so you know earlier I ran like add typo dash js and yarn.lock popped up and node underscore modules popped up. Um, so we can take a look at what yarn.lock is. And it looks an awfully lot like the package.json stuff, right? Um, so maybe the yarn.lock is the exact dependencies, the exact version, the exact like resolution and something like that from package.json. Uh, while node underscore modules is the downloads from like yarn.lock and package.json, right? So because of that, right, if you if this is a GitHub repository, you don't want to actually commit node underscore modules because node underscore modules has all of the it has all of the downloads, all of the NPF packages, all of the like all of the code that is downloaded directly from yarn.lock, even though yarn yarn.lock already specifies it. So you really don't need to like add node underscore modules to a Git repository just to keep your repository clean, right? Um, so no need to add node underscore modules to your computer. Um, this is pretty like small to be honest, but it can get really big and I'll show you an example of it later. Um, but what you might want to add to your um, GitHub repository that a lot of you actually forget is the yarn.lock file. So um, this has the exact resolutions, right? So we want to have this on your repository so that when other contributors add to the GitHub, then um, they will install the exact same dependencies and won't cause any issues. Um, if you're using NPM, if you do NPM install instead of NPM, instead of yarn that install that we just did, um, it will be a similar file and it will be called package lock.json. Um, and that you also do need to commit to your repository because it has all the exact dependencies. Uh, but since you're using Yarn, um, you can just look at this. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna continue a little bit and explain what MPX is. Um, so you might have heard MPX before, and if you haven't, like you you might hear it in the future. And basically, MPX stands for Node Package Executor, right? Um, so it executes things rather than downloading. Right. So just now we added re create React app to your computer. So you would re create React app and some name to like make this into a pre uh, like a React repository, right? Um, okay, cool. Um, so that's how you would use create React app. But like sometimes you don't want to download create React app onto your computer because you're only going to use it once, right? And you want to keep your computer clean. So what you can do is you can actually do npx create React app, and it will execute this uh, this package and on like the input that you give it. Um, so I hope you just not have to download random things to your computer. Um, so that's kind of useful. So. Yes, I will continue on and talk a little bit about TypeScript. So why are we using TypeScript, right? Because like, why not use JavaScript? It's default. Generally, you need a good reason as to why not to use default because there's probably been a lot of thought put into it to choose a default, right? Um, so because the reason why we're using TypeScript is because there's quite a few benefits actually. So first of all, that is really nice that you'll catch right off the bat is autofill. Autofill is hella nice. It Let's see, like for instance, like if you know something is a string, right? Maybe normally React, uh, like drop, like your your VS code will just be like just do random things at you because like it, it just it's just any, it's just like in any file. Um, but now that it knows it's a string, starts with will pop up, 
and like eagles will pop and parse it will pop um and just like things that are really nice that you don't really need to like look things up as much and you can just like oh that looks like what i want um and yeah it's like really nice uh so like autofill is super nice and other id assistance right so it'll let you know when something hasn't been imported and you can hover over it and you can just like directly click import and it'll import for you it's just hella nice speed things up uh, another thing is it catches errors early so um javascript isn't compiled right it's runtime um so when you have a bug sometimes you have to like go to the page and manually test or you can make test files i will go over that a bit later don't worry about it um so that's really nice Um, yeah, so what TypeScript does is TypeScript will let you know when there's like an issue, right? So like, imagine if you have a command that's like, that takes in two ints, but you actually pass it a string, it will let you know, and it will like, just basically help you develop faster, right? And then finally, if you're looking at other people's code, it's a lot easier to like understand when this type is. So that helps with two things, right? Debugging, if you're debugging someone else's code and it's a big repository, for instance, and like the person left or something. And also reusing components because, I mean, if it's easy to reuse, it's gonna be more likely to be reused, let's be honest. If it's hard to reuse, people are just gonna make their own new thing, right? So those are the main reasons. And yeah, and TypeScript is just really nice. Um, quick thing, TypeScript is actually a super set of JavaScript, which has optional typing, and actually compiles back into plain JavaScript. So what that means is all valid JavaScript is valid TypeScript, but not all valid TypeScript is valid JavaScript. So TypeScript is just there to help you. Um, your computer, your, your browser actually doesn't run TypeScript. So what happens is it compiles back into plain JavaScript before it is run onto your browser. Um, so yeah, that's a bit about um, like TypeScript. Um, so just a note, just a quick note, I've actually run Create React App like prior to this. So I wrote npx create React app and then template TypeScript because we're using a TypeScript template. And we are we call I called it intro react. Um, so that's the app name. It actually took a quite a while, so I just ran it beforehand. Uh, and I'll just continue a little bit. So I'll talk a little bit about why React, right? And why it's so popular. React is a library for building user interfaces. So as I stated before, user libraries are, you can use it however you want and wherever you want to use it, right? So it's not a framework. It doesn't force you to do anything. It's kind of nice, right? Um, it's That means it's really lightweight and you can basically insert it anywhere. So I've been in a repository which has been like really like prehistoric. So it didn't have React back then, but I can see like sections where they've added in React because they've noticed that it's just easier to develop with it, right? Um, so it's just really easy to add into things. And it's really lightweight and easy and clean and easy. Um, so a few more reasons to why React is it's component-based. So because it's components-based, it is easy to reuse and can be like sectioned off into small bite-sized pieces that makes make it easier to develop, right? And also reuse the code. Um, so I'll give a little example. So I'm going to go incognito and show you, right? So you look here, imagine making this in HTML CSS. It'd be like coding every single freaking thing. Kind of annoying. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to do that. Um, so in React, like I'm just looking at this and like, I can imagine, imagine like immediately think of like how to componentize this, right? So for instance, like this section, is repeated a lot of times. So I'd probably like make this one component. So this picture and like a little description as one component so that it can be just duplicated, right? And also like these buttons, see these buttons? These are probably duplicated. This can be a component, like each of one of these. Um, the sidebar can be a component. This top bar can be a component. So that when I click anything else, um, this top bar is still there. And you just chose to have that top, right? Um, so like, it's just really easy to reuse parts. Um, other thing, other reason why it's so popular is, you know, it's called React, right? 
the reason it's called, it's called React is because it only updates what needs to be updated, right? So it only updates what needs to be updated and it makes things a little faster because like, it's not like stupid. I mean, sometimes it is stupid, but like, um, it's kind of smart as to like what needs to be updated. Uh, so that's really nice. So like for instance, right? I click around here. There is absolutely zero need to update all this stuff, right? So React would probably, I don't know if this is in React, but like if I was making this, I would just, I wouldn't even change these, right? I'd probably like only, probably only these two changed and then having this changed, um, something like that. Another reason why it's super popular is because it's popular. So because it's popular, it has a good support. And because it has good support, it's popular. It's kind of like a circular um, circular thing. Um, and because it has backing of a big company, which is Facebook, um, you know that it won't really die that soon. And because of that, it's also popular. Uh, so yeah, that's like some reasons why it's popular. So I'll continue on a little bit. Um, I, I mentioned that I ran Create React app a little bit earlier. Um, and I'm going to just show you the results of that. So I'm going to move over to that folder actually. Okay, cool. So as you can see here, there are, I'm going to go to the package actually, actually, and I will point this out. So right here, right? There's a lot of dependencies and I'm going to show you that, let me, Oh, here. Okay. So, you know, earlier I said, like, not to commit node underscore modules. Let's take a look at the, the, like, there's a lot of dependencies here. So, maybe there's a ton of, like, node underscore module stuff. Let's take a look. And as you can see here, there's a ton of stuff. I really don't think you would want to commit all of this stuff online, right? So, you really don't need to, don't please. But you do, like I said before want to commit your yarn.lock online. So as you can see here, it has a ton more stuff here than in the package.json because uh, each of these might have their own like dependencies and all the exact dependencies are just mentioned in this yarn.lock file. So don't forget to commit your yarn.lock file. Um, so I'll go over a little bit about scripts. Uh, these are metadata, right? So you can definitely update these. So these scripts, you can run by just appending yarn in front of it. So when you want to start up your app, you would just run yarn and start. If you want to build your app so that it can be like for production and stuff like that, you would do yarn build. You would do yarn test for like testing your files and stuff like that. And we won't go over it yet. Um, I'll go over a little bit more about testing in future. Uh, like I'm going to have like a CI/CD video probably. Um, so that'll, that'll, I'll probably like talk about it more there. Um, so yeah, I will start up the demo. And while it's starting, because sometimes it takes a little hot click. Um, oh, okay, it's quick today. Okay, um, that's basically what this uh, package application is mostly. Oh, it's done. So as you can see, I started it up with yarn start, and now it has a file, right? And it says oh, edit src slash app.tfx and then do reload. Let's go over there and try to do that. Uh, okay, yeah. Let's take a look and try to do that, okay? So let's maybe do like ER. Uh, I, I am changing. Yay. Okay. So you will see, oh no, that it has a new I am changing down here, right? Yeah, nice. Um, okay. So that's a little bit as to like what you can do to change it. But like, as you can look here, like it's like, okay, like, why does this work? Why is this running? Stuff like that. So inside of your package.json, right? Um, yeah. So basically inside of your index.tsx, this is what is going to run, right? So this is going to build actually. And when it builds, um, when it builds, it's just built by default. It's just index. The index is generally just built um, inside of SRC. Uh, what happens is that it's going to render this stuff in place of the root, right? So what does that mean? The document is actually inside of public. So this stuff is all public, right? So inside of index.html, um, there's a lot of like file stuff. 
and then it is in place of root. So it will add all this app stuff into root. So this stuff is hosted online. I will show you this to convince you because words are hard. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, it has all the stuff that we said it would have, and it has root, which is the app.tsx, right? So, yay, nice, nice. Um, oh, that's how that works. Um, all this public stuff is public. As you can see, like, there's like some random things, just like manifest.json or like robots.tsx, and just this and that. Um, we don't really need to go over this. This is not really important, but just to mention, this is because uh, this is a uh, React, like doing create React app has made this by default a progressive web app. So what a progressive web app is, is it's kind of like a platform app and you can look into a little more, uh, but basically it is intended to work on any platform and it almost makes it like a computer app, right? Because like, it will work even, the the page will work even when you don't have Wi-Fi if you've already downloaded the page and stuff like that. Um, it's not really important. We're not gonna do it because our learning labs probably don't need to be such high tech and there's just undisturbed amount. Um, yeah, I will guess I will go over a little bit of importing. So as you can see here, right? When we do this app thingy and like somehow it's app.tsx, which is kind of random. If you think about it, not really actually because of the same name. But like, how did that happen, right? So what's going on is that we have imported app from dot slash app. So the reason why that works is because we're saying, okay, we're going to call this app dot slash app, which is app.tsx app. And we are going to render that inside of this thing. Um, so that's actually how you um, import a like a React component is just like importing, right? From the path name. And then to import CSS, all you need to do is just import the CSS file. Um, if you wanna import like an image, like a PNG or SVG, then you can just do uh, import from the path and just stuff like that. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, what I think that is like very, very, very essential to um, just like our development is this thing. Looks a lot like HTML CSS, but it's not actually HTML CSS, right? Um, it's actually something called JSX or TSX, which stands for JavaScript expression or type TypeScript expression. But for now, we're just, I'm just gonna talk about the JavaScript part of the TypeScript since JavaScript is a subset of um, TypeScript. So um, this looks a lot like HTML CSS, but it's a bit more powerful. So before we talk about the power, uh, actually I'll talk about the power in it first. So it's really powerful because you can run JavaScript code inside of that. So if you do like const, um, 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 hungry, um, then you, all you need to do is just put it inside of the bracket and it will run the JavaScript code. It will run the JavaScript code and whatever is returned will be displayed. So let's take a look at that. Um, and as you can see, it says hungry as expected. Uh, that's pretty powerful. So I will give a few more examples in a little bit, but basically TLDR is you can run JavaScript inside of JSX, which is why it's called JavaScript expression. So actually what's happening under the hood is um, this JSX is actually not HTML CSS. Um, I'm not going to go into the history, but you can look it up. It's actually really interesting to see the history because before, like, you had to do like React .tree element, and each of these were like, um, so before you had to do like, okay, you had to do React .tree element, and these two are the same things. Like, look how painful that is. This is, right? So uh, that's what JavaScript expression is. It's not actually exactly this because um, there's another article I will, I, it's not really important, but basically TLDR is, it compiles into something else. It's not actually HTML, CSS. Um, so because of that, there are actually a few changes. 
um, there are two main changes. One of the main changes is that before a class would be called class equals app.log dash load, right? But as you can see here, it's class name. The reason why that is, is because inside of JavaScript, um, class is a reserved keyword. So because of that, we just it's just called class name now because just because. Um, another big change is if you have like a button, which is anything, honestly. Uh, I'm just gonna call it button actually, just see if you know it. Button. Um, before it'd be like on dash click, right? Equals whatever. But now you need to do on click camel face. Um, and let's just do like, I don't know, council.log. Council.log is um, JavaScript's example, uh, JavaScript's like, right? Like, see out. Oh no, what is angry? Um, JSX must be assigned one non-empty expression. Yeah, okay, there you go. Um, so that's what, uh, that's like the two main differences, right? So to reiterate class name and on click. Um, yeah, I guess I would show a little bit more example as to how you can use JavaScript in your code. So let's just say you have like a function, right? Let's do a function const. Uh, actually, I'll just do function so that it's not confusing as to how to use it. Um, append meow. Um, and then you, you are expecting some script, right? But I'm not going to type it because I'll go over TypeScript next time. Um, OK, I guess I'll type it here. Uh, let's do return um, f here plus meow meow pee pee. It's like my cat. Um, anyways, so now if we do something like uh, append meow uh, Pickles, meow, baby, pickles, yes. Um, meow, baby. Um, now, if we go on our reacting, it says pickles says meow, baby. So, as you can see here, it'll just basically print out, print text, um, anything that is like evaluated inside of the data text, uh, inside of the JavaScript code, right? So, there you go. Um, yeah, one of the things is interesting to note, last thing that's interesting to note is, so this is TypeScript, right? You'll see that these actually have extensions.tsx. Um, so if you have a file that has any TypeScript expression, then you'll need to have it have an uh, ending of .tsx. But for files that don't have JSX, I mean, TSX, same thing, whatever, um, then you can just append it with .tx. And you might come into this if you have like constants or like, I'll go over this in a little bit, but it does come up sometimes. Um, so yeah, here are some additional resources if you're interested in it. And I'll just mention it briefly, but next time I'll go over a little bit more JavaScript and TypeScript. And I'll also give a, go over an introduction to React, React time. An introduction of like hooks and React, things like that. So yeah, so basically to recap today we, Introduce the workspace, introduce Node, Yarn, NPM, MPX. Explain why we're using Yarn instead of NPM. Um, we also went over TypeScript and why we're using over JavaScript. And we also went over an introduction to React, why we're using it, and talked about Create React App, and did a quick intro of TSX and just how to go about using the React code base. Um, so yeah, thank you for listening, and I will see you next time. See you guys.